The Cybertruck delivery date has been announced. We've seen the frunk opening and it looks like it is a powered automatic frunk and Joe Rogan shot the Cybertruck with an arrow and no surprise, it did not go through. We are going to be talking about some of the best things we know so far about the Cybertruck leading up to the delivery event, which is in just a few weeks and I will be there. So Cybertruck was announced four years ago and we still know so few things about it. So just as a refresher, I'm gonna put the original specs up on screen that Tesla had talked about back then. I don't think we're gonna be meeting a lot of these. It's just my opinion. I mentioned later in the video why I think that. So just like the new Model 3 had some media coverage at the same time that Tesla unveiled the vehicle, it looks like Cybertruck is probably going to get this as well. No, I have not been invited, but hey, go on X and tag Elon and tell him you want Dirty Tesla to check out the Cybertruck and make a video about it, you know, in time for the release. But it looks like Top Gear was filming the vehicle and somebody got a quick video of them doing that, which I can link down below. But we saw a few things. We saw that the frunk looks like it's powered open. Now, some people are saying, oh, it looks like they popped it open. Maybe just the struts can pop it open and then you have to manually close it. To me, it looks like they pushed a button, which number one, that's the first time we have a Tesla with an exterior button for the frunk, which is awesome. But it looks like they push the button and then it just takes a second for the frunk to start lifting up. It's actually similar to the way the trunk on my Model Y works. When you push the button to open it, it just takes a second to make sure the trunk is unlatched and then it begins the opening mechanism. So that's what I think we're seeing here. I definitely think this is a powered frunk. In my opinion, if Cybertruck at this point doesn't come with a powered frunk compared to the competition, a little bit embarrassing, but I do think it's going to be powered. The other thing you notice in this frunk video, the frunk looks way different than what we've seen in the past in videos of testing of the Cybertruck and everything. And it looks like there may be some additional panel in the frunk where maybe you could open that up. Now, maybe it's just access for like 12 volt or 15 volt, whatever battery that's behind there and something like that. But I'm hoping we get some outlets up there. It'd be really disappointing. Again, if there's no outlets in the frunk, I'd, I'd personally like at least a couple, uh, but we're gonna have to wait and see unless there's another leak or whatever leading up to the event. Now, if you order a Cybertruck, you're gonna be waiting a long time because Elon said they're aiming for 200,000 a year or more when, once they reach volume production. On top of that, on the earnings call, Elon Musk said there's over a million people People that have reservations for the Cybertruck. Some of those people have multiple reservations. I would imagine they'll only let you take one in the beginning. I mean, think about that. If they hit 200,000 Cybertrucks a year today, if that started today, it would be five years before they cleared out the pre-orders even if nobody else ordered. I mean, it's crazy, but even if half of them canceled, it's two and a half years if today they were at max capacity, which it's gonna take them probably 18 months or so to get up to that 200,000 a year number. It's gonna be a long wait for some people. You also can't use a referral code to order a Cybertruck right now, which makes sense. But if you're gonna buy a different Tesla and you wanna save $250, check out my patron Chris's referral code. Thank you so much, Chris for supporting the channel. You can use his referral code in the link in the description below. So Elon Musk was recently on Joe Rogan's podcast again. I think this is his third time on there. It's a pretty good listen. Uh, it's a little crazy. And at one point they're like eating pizza and making a bunch of weird noises chewing, which I thought was really strange for a podcast, but whatever. There's some good information in there. The most interesting thing for me was Joe Rogan shot an arrow at the Cybertruck. Now maybe this was pre-planned, but it really seems like they just kind of randomly, you know, stumbled upon this. Elon talked about how the Cybertruck got shot and it didn't penetrate, and we're gonna see video of that at the delivery event. But Joe Rogan asked if an arrow would penetrate it, and Elon bet him a dollar that no, it would not. So they ran out, and they just happened to have a bow there, and they shot the bow, and it did not penetrate the Cybertruck. Now, a lot of people were asking, wait, what about a normal car? Does, does an arrow go through a normal car door? And yes, it does. I found some footage from some other videos, and even a Tesla Model 3 was shot by arrows, and yes, they went right through the door. Some of them stopped in the door, some of them went through the door. Uh, so yeah, Cybertruck is really tough. And then on top of that, a lot of people are like, oh, who cares? This is such a gimmick. Why are they talking about this? The point of the Cybertruck is that it's tough, and think about this in day-to-day -day life. When you go to the grocery store and somebody leaves their cart and it gets blown into the Cybertruck, who cares? It doesn't matter at all. Your Cybertruck will be perfectly fine even if it gets a little scratch or anything. It just doesn't matter. And this is what I'm excited for. As of now, I drive down dirt roads and if there's a branch sticking out in the road and it scrapes all along you know, my Model Y that has paint, that could potentially be thousands of dollars in damage. Same thing for any truck, any pickup you find on the road. You could get paint damage that costs you thousands of dollars to repair. It's kind of silly when you think about a truck that's supposed to be doing truck things. So for me, these demonstrations, while a little silly and not practical in daily life for almost anybody, show how tough it is and kind of the point of Cybertruck. On top of that, the arrow, when it was shot with the arrow, and of course, when it was shot with the gun, did leave big dents in the stainless steel. And people are asking, wait, 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 how do you repair this? Do you have to remove the whole door and get a new door? Can you do some type of welding or whatever? People had all kinds of uh, ideas on how to repair this. And for me personally, it was kind of like, who cares? Again, it's kind of the point for me. If I get a huge uh, dent or ding on my Cybertruck, it's like, oh, 
Well, that's why I have it. It's not going to compromise the structure. It's not gonna start rusting, which I will link a video above where I talked about rusting of the Cybertruck if you wanna check that out. Definitely read the comments on that one too because there's a lot more insight in the comments on top of what I talked about in the video. Uh, but yeah, you could just leave it and who cares? It's the Cybertruck. It's supposed to be tough and dinged up and used for work. So it looks really good to me. Now, another video from Joe Tettenmeyer, who does the drone shots above Gigafactory Texas, showed that the Cybertruck might have been crab walking, which is a feature the Hummer EV has. But a lot of people are thinking there was actually either something wrong with the vehicle, like accidentally uh, something happened that was causing that weird sideways motion, or some people were theorizing that certain aspects of the vehicle were disabled for testing. So this may not be an official feature, uh, crab walk, that comes with the final Cybertruck. To be honest, for me, I don't really care. It's not something I think I would really use. It'd be neat to have, so, you know, if they can, why not throw it in there? But yeah, there's a little bit of debate as to whether this was actually crab walking, or there was a malfunction, the prototype vehicle uh, messed up, or intentionally was modified in some way to test out that sideways movement. Now, some concerns of Cybertruck off-road testing have come up. So take all this with a grain of salt. Actually, take even the positive stuff with a grain of salt because the truck's not out yet. So uh, we're going to learn more at the delivery event. And especially once normal people start taking delivery and putting their Cybertruck through its paces and testing everything out and posting videos uh, online. Uh, but... The approach angle and the departure angle of the Cybertruck are somewhat in question. So here is a picture I found of the Rivian R1T, uh, departure and approach angles and everything. And to me, it looks like the front of the Cybertruck looks great, uh, but to other people, it looks like maybe the back of the Cybertruck for the departure angle is not looking too good. It looks like there is so much hanging off the back there. And on top of that, a lot of that plastic is really low down that it's gonna affect that uh, departure and approach angle. So I'm looking forward to hearing down in the comments what people think about this. It does look to me like the rear bumper is a little low and the departure angle may not be that great. Keep in mind, of course, there's air suspension, but moving the whole body up and down only helps you so much when you have a bunch of your body coming off of the back tires there and when you have a bunch of that body kind of hanging down low. Overall, I'm sure the car will be great. No car is perfect. You can always find things to complain about with every vehicle, but but I think some people were really hoping this is going to be an off-road beast and they're getting a little concerned that it may not be the best vehicle in the world for off-roading. And, you know, maybe it's not, but maybe it's still going to be really good and good enough for those who want to buy it. Now, a really cool picture of the Cybertruck towing a Model Y popped up and this led people to get excited about towing weight. So in 2019, Tesla said the dual motor middle variant will be able to tow 10,000 pounds, whereas the tri-motor variant will be able to tow 14,000 pounds. Well, looking at this picture, some people have said, minimum 10,000 towing is confirmed because of the weight of the Model Y, the trailer, and then the axles and tires that the trailer is using. Now, I imagine these numbers are gonna be very impressive. Tesla is gonna to wanna to blow this out of the water. And on top of that, they have, of course, the best charging network. So although your range will probably be cut in half or maybe even slightly worse than that when you're towing with the Cybertruck, you will have a plethora of chargers to choose from, along with version four chargers, which are beginning to pop up everywhere. Now, as of today, the big benefit of version four chargers is the cable is longer. So that helps with number one, something like the Cybertruck, which is bigger. And it does, of course, charge at all Tesla superchargers, but it looks like when it backs into those spots, it might be just a little tight with the version three and version two shorter cables. But on top of that, version four eventually will be able to get above the 250 kilowatt limit. There's all kinds of speculation as to how fast the Cybertruck will eventually be able to supercharge. Elon Musk at the semi delivery event talked about the semi charging up to 750 kilowatts, which is of course three times the current capacity of a version three charger. And then he also mentioned that Cybertruck is using the same, you know, platform architecture. It doesn't mean Cybertruck could go up to 750 kilowatts. That sounds like crazy to me, uh, but 500 kilowatts maybe is very reasonable. And depending on battery size and how long it can maintain that peak charge, uh, charging times may be really, really fast. So one of the most important pieces of Cybertruck information that we still don't know, and I don't believe we'll know until delivery, is the range. Now, as we move into Cybertruck efficiency and range and how big the battery is, we got to talk about the cost of charging the Cybertruck because it will be the most expensive Tesla to fuel up for two reasons. It'll have the biggest battery of any Tesla we've ever seen, most likely, and it almost definitely will be the least efficient Tesla we've ever seen. And you may wanna get solar panels to help you save fueling up this Cybertruck. That's where today's sponsor Drone Quote comes in. Check them out. They have totally free tools so you can see if solar is right for you. I've had solar for years and I love it. With the interest rates today, I don't know, maybe solar is not a great investment if you can't pay cash, but guess what? Drone Quote is not afraid to crunch the numbers for you absolutely free and let you know, 
hey, this is a great investment. You should do it. It'll pay itself off in X amount of years. Or you know what? In your current situation, solar's not right for you. You should wait and check it out again in the future. So thank you so much to DroneQuote for sponsoring this video. Use the links down below for their free tools to see how much money you can save. Now, there was that weird video where somebody like randomly hopped in a Cybertruck and was checking out everything. They even touched the percentage on the battery to see if it would switch to miles. And it turns out that that is disabled in these current Cybertrucks. So even the engineers that are driving these Cybertrucks around, if they don't know the mileage range number estimate, they actually will never know because you can't press the percentage and change it to miles. It has been disabled in the software on these release candidate vehicles, which definitely makes sense. Now I'm going into total speculation here, but I've done a lot of thought about this and I wanna take, let's say we get Model X efficiency minus about 10%. I think the Cybertruck will probably be even more inefficient than that, but I'm just trying to make up some numbers here so we can have some information to play with. So let's put the Cybertruck at 375 watt hours per mile. I think that would be a really good efficiency. I'm not sure it will be that low, but I'm gonna guess that for these calculations. For comparison, the Model X gets 330 watt hours per mile. The R1T is rated at 440 watt hours per mile. So if we take that information into account, let's guess that the Cybertruck is 130 kilowatt hour battery. Now, why am I guessing that? It's slightly bigger than Tesla's current biggest battery pack, which is the 100 kilowatt hours or so in the Model S and X. And it is pretty much exactly double the 4680 Model Y battery capacity. And we're of course getting 4680s in the Cybertruck. So it's just a logical number. And we'll go over some other battery packs as well. But I think when Tesla wants to balance the cost of this thing, you can't put too many batteries because that limits number one, how many vehicles you can make and number two, how expensive it's gonna be. But at the same time, you have to have enough to get a decent range in this thing if people actually wanna use it to tow and go long distances. So let's say the Cybertruck gets the same efficiency as the Model X, you're gonna be looking at 393 miles with a 130 kilowatt hour battery. Of course, give or take, it's probably not all gonna be usable if the battery's that size, or maybe the battery is 140 kilowatt hours and it's 130 usable, whatever. So somewhere around almost 400 miles, which at reveal, of course, Tesla said they were gonna get 500 miles on the tri-motor. I just don't see that. How are we gonna get to 500 miles? You would need a 165 kilowatt hour battery to get 500 miles if you had Model X efficiency. Now that battery size doesn't seem too crazy to me, but Model X efficiency does seem too crazy to me. Now, if you have 375 watt hours per mile, which is kind of in between Model X and Rivian R1T efficiency, you're getting 346 miles. So closer to 350 miles. And honestly, I really think that's the minimum Tesla is gonna wanna put out on this truck. I don't think they're gonna wanna say a number less than 350 miles. Now, what if the Cybertruck had the same efficiency as the Rivian R1T? Now you're down to 295 miles with a 130 kilowatt hour battery. That's not happening. We are, there's no way, no chance this thing gets released with less than 300 miles. I just, I know. Now, two more quick calculations I wanna make here to get to 500 miles with different battery sizes. First up, to get 500 miles with 375 watt hours per mile of efficiency, which is in between a Model X and a Rivian R1T, you would need 187 0.5 kilowatt hour battery. Again, it's within the realm of possibility, but that's a pretty big battery and efficiency may not even be that good. Now, if you get Rivian R1T efficiency, which I believe the Cybertruck will be decently better than this, you would need a 220 kilowatt hour battery, which is more than double significantly more than double the size of the Model S and X batteries. Now, what's interesting about that battery size is it's decently close to the size of the battery in the Silverado and the Hummer EV. So I don't know, I just found that really interesting. Although the Hummer only gets like 350 miles with that battery size, so efficiency is terrible in that thing. So again, I do not believe Tesla's gonna have a battery that massive, at least for now. And I don't believe efficiency will be that bad either. Uh, but these are just some ideas because I am so curious about Cybertruck range. In my opinion, I don't think we're gonna see 500 miles, at least for now, uh, but we'll see in a few weeks. Somebody spotted the Tesla Cybertruck using sentry mode and just a fun little thing they saw, the owl, the same owl you see when you order the Cybertruck, it was on the sentry mode screen watching over the truck. So pretty interesting, a different graphic than what's in other Teslas with like the red eye thing. So Tesla is always adding these fun software updates. Now it seems like every time Tesla releases a new vehicle, they also need to release a brand new way to open the doors of that vehicle. And that is held true with the Cybertruck truck. So there is no push button like the Model X. There's no pull bar like in the Model S. There's no kind of flappy door handles like the Model 3 and the Model Y. The Cybertruck, you just kind of either push a capacitive looking button above the door or maybe swipe down or something and the door pops out just a little bit, just like the Model X, and then you can grab it and open it. Now the brake lights of the Cybertruck, I found pretty interesting. So here's a quick video showing how they work. And at first I was kind of like, oh, that's not my favorite thing. They don't look very bright. Of course, it's just a video. So maybe in person it's better. And they don't seem to change that much. 
uh, from you know what you see when the, the vehicle's not braking. But then as I was driving behind some other pickups, I noticed that the brake lights on a lot of cars don't change at all. They just get brighter aside from the upper brake light in the middle, that one turns on or off. But other than that middle higher light, the other brake lights are like the exact same lights and they just get brighter in a lot of vehicles. Tesla has made millions of cars at this point. I don't think they're gonna mess up something like this, but I just thought I'd mention it because it's just, I noticed it initially and a lot of comments kind of said the same thing. At the end of the day, I'm sure these brake lights will work great. So let me know what you're excited about for the Cybertruck. I will talk to you down in the comments and you will see me in the next video.